Hello everyone, welcome back in today's tutorial on Eclipse. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn how to debug the code in Eclipse tool. You might have using this Eclipse tool to develop the Java code. So here is a sample Java code. The name of class is debug example. It has main method with a signature as public static void. This is the method it will be called very first. Then it has some variable declaration like i, j, k. Those are integer variables. This class also has a method called as addition, which is used to do the addition of two variables or the two integer values, and it returns the integer result. And we are calling this method here, and we are getting the result. Using that result, we are populating the another variable. Now assume that this is very simple code, but in real time you might be working with the thousands of line code. So debugging is actually helps to uh, to understand what logic is going on and if there is an an issue, how to fix it. So in order to debug your program, you need to have at least one class with the main method that is required. Second thing required is debug points. You can create a debug points, for example. I want to create debug point here. So on the left panel of this uh, Java class, you can just click, you will see the debug point is created. Also, you can create multiple debug point if, you, if it is required. Create the minimum uh, debug point and make sure those debug points are capturing as many uh, as event for your analysis. So I'm creating three debug point in one method, in main method. You can create one debug point, that is also fine. Uh, I will also create one uh, debug point in the addition method. So I'll just go here and put the point. So I created the debug point. Now we are going to run our uh, the debugger. So there are a couple of ways to run this class in the debug mode. You can go to the run and you have the, the debug option here or in this menu bar you have the debug option you also have the run but don't go for the run option let's go for the debug option if you go to the right hand side of this debug icon you'll see the which class you want to run in the debug mode so there are multiple classes which is all i already created but um, uh, i don't want to run the other classes i would like specifically looking for the debug example so what I'll do, I'll just right click on this class and I'll mention debug as. So this is another option we have. When you select the debug as, there are two options, debug on the server or debug as a Java application. As this is not uh, uh, the servlet component or the server side component for which we need to debug on the server. This is a plain Java code, so we'll run as a Java or we'll debug as a Java application. As soon as hit the Java or debug as a Java application, it will take ask us to change the perspective or the view of your Eclipse tool, which uh, which is helpful for your debugging. So we'll just go ahead and click yes, and it the 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 view will change. In this view, you have the debug section with the current debug point. It says the debug example main method and the line number is 12. So you can see the line number and that is our current debug point. Also, if there are any variables are coming fr from this method, ARGS is variable is coming. So if user is passing some values for those argument, those will be available here. If you want to see what are the debug breakup points, you can go ahead in the breakup points and it will show us what are the breakup break points available in whole my workspace, not just specific to this class, it will show the all the deb, uh, the breakpoints or the debug points. So we'll just keep the variable on. On the right hand side, it will have the outline also. So what are the methods available in your given current class? And so here is uh, the icon. It will it it shows the um, our very first debug point. You can use the keywords to to move the the debugger line to the next. So if you see, F5 is, F5 is used to step into. So for example, if you reach to the method level, you need to go inside the method. So you have to use F5. If you want to just go to the next uh, point, 
then you can go to the step four that is f6 there are some other like f7 we'll see that also there is a shift f5 is also there to have the uh, steps to filter out so let's go ahead and use the f6 we'll see what happens but we have to click on this uh, example window so my cursor is in this window so when i click this f6 it goes to the next next executable line if i use again f6 it will go to the next executable line on the right hand side it will show what are the current values of these variables i and j the i value is 10 and j value is 20 if you go to the next it will show the k value as a zero because at this point the k value has not populated in order to see what is happening in this addition method you have to go inside you have to we have to step into that so we, i'll click the step into and it will go to the uh, inside the method we don't need the debug point here because we did it the step into but if you don't want to do the step into and if you directly jump into this point you can just create a debug point at this point you if you see the value of a is 10 value of b is 20 if you go to the next point it will show the value c as a 30 because it did the calculation at the same time you can see the step return is also enable also drop to frame is also enable so i'll just go to the step return so i came back to my return so if you have the multiple statements in your method and you want to escape from that method you can just use a step return at this point the value will not be assigned until this step is executed so i have to go to the next step and you can see the value of k is 30 because it did this addition of 10 plus 20 and it came as a 30 on the same line we can go to the next step and we'll see the values at this point it is doing the addition of k and j now suppose this is the runtime if you see the value here the y will not be mentioned the reason is it is not completed step but if you want to determine the value you can just select that value and use a control shift i it will give us the value what is the value available for that y so as this step is not completed it is have the zero value you can just select this value it will do the addition because if you see the let me show you the value of k is 30 10 plus 20 and value of j is 20 so 20 plus 30 is a 50 so that is what it is result is giving you have to use control shift i and it will give us the result if you want to change the value at runtime instead of k if you want to use x you can mention and you'll get the value immediately so in the debug mode you can change the value at runtime so i have not saved this file you can see the asterisk sign at the top left it is still running we have not saved the changes but you can still get the current value from those variables so that is possible if i save this file the debug will start from the beginning so it will go to the the very first line of the main method and uh, that th that is the way it is it works but if you want to change any variable and see how it is working at runtime you can do that by changing the parameter but do not save those so i'll just do the control z to go to the proper reverse mode so this is where we use the f6 f5 those are the keys we can use or you can use this icons also to uh, to render into the program so now i just executed this next step and this time we'll have the value populated y as a 50 because 30 plus 20 30 plus 30 value for k and 20 value for j it is giving me the result as a 50 it is going to the end of this method and we'll just exit so it is going to the exit method of the thread thread is a java class we we have not written this this is inbuilt class so it is going to the exit 
automatically and it is going inside the method so that's fine so if you want to if you want to skip it you can skip or you can just stop it so by this way you can debug your java code it's very simple first you have to make sure you have the one main method create debug point once you create debug point, start your program in the debug mode and render through your code. I hope this simple tutorial will help you to understand how debug point works. There is one more thing. If you want to stop this debugging, so go to this debug point and you can just use this icon called as a skip all the breaking points. So you can skip, so you can see, even if you run this program in the debug mode, it will execute as a, there is no debug mode. Let me show you that debug as a Java application. It completely executed without stopping. So that is the way. So if you want to enable only one debug mode, you can just enable it or just select that and enable it. Oh, let me show you. let me okay so this is disabling all the debug points i think you need to remove all these debug points if you don't want uh if you just want one debug point yeah either you can just deselect so those debug points will be removed from your classes um, those will be disabled and it will get only one debug point and you can see those are automatically disabled on the left hand side those are the white boxes so if you run this as a debug it will go directly to the addition method so you can see it is already there so this is a simple way if you want to disable you can just come here and disable and you can execute your program as a normal way um, if you have any questions or queries you can definitely mention in the comment section of this video do not forget to subscribe my channel for more interesting updates. Thank you again. Have a nice time.